Good morning. In this video lesson, this is day two as we're starting to take a look at solving equations. Our big focus today is going to be how do we solve equations step by step. Mr. Neville called that peeling the onion last year. We're going to be talking about that as using inverse operations to gather and combine like terms. We're going to talk more today about what all those fancy phrases mean. But in short, they mean we're going to use opposite operations to cancel terms out so that we can get all the variable terms on one side and then all of the constant terms on the other side of the equation. Let's take a look at what that means. Hopefully, you've already reviewed the key terms. It's going to be very important to start knowing what each of these phrases and terms mean so we can understand how to solve the much more complicated equations we're going to get. Two examples today. The green equation, a little simpler, 6g equals 24 minus 2g. And then we're going to turn to the purple equation where we see a whole bunch more terms that make it more complicated. First thing you're going to think about, when you're trying to solve this green equation, what would be a good first step? And I'm going to show you my whiteboard for a second. I want to point out a few things before you're pausing the video. So as we take a look at the whiteboard in the equation here, one second. First thing you should be taking note, how many terms we have here. You're going to be asked how many terms there are a bunch today. Here we should see a term is every time we have a number, a variable, or a number and a variable joined together. So up here in our example today, we had three terms, 4x minus 8 equals 12. That's an equation you were used to working with. Our first example today also has three terms, 6g, 24, and negative 2g. And I want to point out what's a little different today. Now we have, I'm going to put a blue box around the variable terms. We have two variable terms, and I'm going to put a red circle around my constants, and one constant this time which is a little different than the equations you were used to last year where we would get two constant terms and just one variable term. So think about what am I going to do when trying to solve this green equation? What would be a good first step as I'm taking a look at it? Pause the video. Welcome back. Hopefully what you recognized, a good first step, and we're going to take a look at the whiteboard here because I have two variable terms, 6g in the blue box, negative 2g, in the other blue box, and because they're on opposite sides of the equation, this is one of the reasons I draw the river straight down through my equal sign. When they're on opposite sides, I can't combine them yet. I need to use an inverse operation to get them together. That inverse operation, how we move terms from one side to the other, is either adding or subtracting. I could use a plus 2g, and if I'd added 2g to a negative 2g, they would eliminate. It's going to be my method for moving the g's from the right side and gathering all of those like terms, all of the g terms, on the left half of the equal sign. If we add 2g on the right, we're required to add 2g on the left. 6g's plus 2 more of the g's gives us 8 in total of whatever that g value is equal to. What's the only thing remaining over here? 24 is the constant term. And now you see we've gathered our constant terms on the right side of the equation, our variable terms on the left side of the equation. All that's left to do is eliminate the coefficient. How do I get rid of a multiplied by 8? Again, that's an inverse operation, but this time we're using division. We should start getting comfortable using a fraction sign to show division. Multiplying whatever g is by 8, then dividing by 8 would cancel itself out. 8 divided by 8 is just really 1g. We have to do the same operation on both sides. 24 divided by 8 gives us 3. Now g is equal to 3. We're not done yet. We still need to check that answer. We're going to come back to that later, but I'm going to put this whiteboard aside. Take a look back at the document. That's how we found the solution to the green equation. Hopefully you tried to do that on your own before watching me. Now, more complicated. Take a look at that purple equation, which I'm going to have on this whiteboard here. And your job is going to be to work out the purple equation. I'm going to show you a couple things on the whiteboard before you pause the video that might help. The first thing we want to recognize, there are now six terms, p, negative 8, positive 7p, negative 2, positive 4p, and positive 10. So as you pause this video, think to yourself, what do we need to first do when there's this many terms? Try to identify the variable terms, p, 7p, 4p. See if there's anything we can do to simplify this equation first. I'll run through this whole equation here. We're not expecting you to be able to do this quite yet. 
all of it, but maybe we figured it out on our own. If not, this is where we're trying to get to. First thing you should see here, I'm going to put blue boxes around the variable terms. There's three of them. Of the six terms in this equation, three are variable terms, and the other three red circles are the constant terms. When there's this many terms, I should think simplify first. There must be some like terms that are already gathered, already on the same side, and we see that here. P and positive 7P. Negative 2 and positive 10 are constants that are together gathered on the right side of the equation. These are variables gathered on the left side. We can combine those like terms right away. P plus 7P gives us 8P. We still have the negative 8. That equal sign lives on the river. It splits our left and our right sides, keeps them separate. Negative 2 combines with positive 10. That's the same thing as 10 minus 2, which gives us 8. So we have 8 plus 4P. By simplifying, now we're down to just two variable terms and two constant terms. But they're not gathered yet. Constants on different sides, variables on different sides. Inverse operations are going to help us start to gather those. I'm used to getting my variable terms together first, but you could also gather the constants first. I could either subtract 8p, which would send this 8p over here, but I would rather work with subtracting 4p. I see that's going to keep everything more positive, and it's easier to work to me doing 8 minus 4 than doing 4 minus 8. So that's why I chose to move this 4p, positive 4p, from the right expression to the left expression by using the inverse operation, negative 4p. 8 minus 4p gives us 4p. Because I'm running out of room on the whiteboard, I'm going to save room. I'm doing the second step and the third step together. I know the constant, negative 8 and positive 8, can't be combined yet. And because I sent the p's to the left side, I need to send the constants over to the right. How do I move negative 8 over there? By adding 8. We add 8 to both sides. That cancels out the negative 8. 8 plus 8 gives us 16. And now we see the equation, all the variable terms have been gathered here on the left, all of the constant terms now gathered on the right. Last step you should be comfortable with, we're dividing both sides by 4. P is equal to 4. So we have two answers now. P is equal to 4. Last part says explain you can confirm whether your solutions are correct. Then insert an image with your work proving it. How do we do that? I'm going to take a look and show you one example. You're going to have to do the more complicated one on your own. We're going to take a look at 6g equals 24 minus 2g, and we thought the answer was g equals 3. So the way that we're going to check whether g equals 3, we call this substitution. So your answer for part 4 on guided practice, on the guided problems, you use substitution to confirm your answer is correct. We take our equation, 6g equals 24 minus 2g, and we're going to plug in this answer, g equals 3, to see if that works. 6 times g becomes 6 times 3 because I'm checking, does g equal 3? That's my question. 24 minus 2 times 3. What does 6 times 3 give us? 18. What does 2 times 3 give us? 6. So we have 24 minus 6. 24 minus 6 leaves us with 18. Because 18 is equal to 18, I know g definitely is equal to 3. This answer here is correct. Because when I plug 3 into the equation, it creates a true statement. It works. You do the same thing for the purple one. You're going to plug in. You think p, whatever p is equal to, you're going to plug that into the equation for all the variables. Confirm if it's correct. And today, we expect you to start confirming all of your solutions. You'll see that for the last part on each equation you're given today. Let me and Ms. Stewart know if you have any questions. Good luck on the work today.